Fresh Vibes Podcast. What's up, Rice and Grinders? We're back again with the banger. Back again with the Rice and Grind here today. Being October, I feel it's adequate. We talk about fear. The word fear. I don't remember who said it. If it was Jim Ron or Zig Ziglar. Uh, two solid guys. If you guys really want to Rice and Grind, these guys were the Rice and Grind. Go check out those two names. Huge, huge speakers, man. These guys will really get you motivated and going. But I don't remember which one of them had an acronym for fear. And I thought it was really cool. I've never heard it before. So the acronym for fear was false evidence appearing real. And I thought that was genius when I heard it because there's many, many times that in your mind you start conjuring this fear about a situation uh something that's gonna happen in the in the future something that hasn't even happened in the future and your mind's already playing tricks on you and putting fear in your head and putting doubt in your head and uh that's basically what it comes down to if you if you really look at it this false evidence appearing real but it, all it really comes down to being is us making that up in our head. And more than half the time, I've realized that that fear or, or that that the way you played it out, it was always the worst scenario you could think of. And most of the times it just never panned out that way. It was just something totally different. Um, but another thing about fear that I've noticed is that it, it's totally within your control. You're in a full control of how much fear you want to live with and how much little of it you need in your life. And I'll be honest with you, I feel like fear is, is something good, something that we need. Fear, fear could be a good thing. Fear could be something that keeps us away from harm. It reminds you, it's almost like a reminder, like, you know what, you better fear this because it's bigger than you or it's dangerous, whatever. But the fear I'm talking about now, it's not that fear, it's not the good fear. It's not the kind of fear that keeps us safe. It's the type of fear that we ourselves make up in our head. I remember the one of my first times that I felt fear and it was like evident and I'm never gonna forget this man because it was like true fear but again conjured up by my own head was the first time i ever saw the exorcist if anybody's seen the movie the exorcist you know what i'm talking about man it was genius man and i'm talking about genius in the sense that not only was the directing creepy as hell it was scary as hell but the music dude like the sounds that went along with it they were so eerie and and if anybody's seen it i believe just the beginning scenes of that movie you hear what i'm talking about about eerie sounds it's just like it gets under your skin man like they, they did it so well like these guys knew what the hell they were doing because they matched the sounds to the type of movie it was and it was basically about a girl being uh possessed by a demon and then exercised by the church the catholic church uh, but I remember watching this for the first time. I was like, shoot, maybe 12, 13 at the most. It was twisted, man. Like it really got under your skin. And I remember like that fear that, that just kept building up in my head watching this movie as it played along. It, it kept getting worse and worse to the point like I could actually tell you like that night, I maybe slept like an hour or two but no more man like I was up just like that fear was just so so real so so alive so in my head that I wasn't gonna go to sleep man I was scared man and that movie like no lie even like now as a grown-up if I was to watch it I'll watch it and I'll be able to sleep no problem but there's certain scenes and like I said certain sounds that really get under your skin and you're just like man this movie was really well done to put the fear in you and and that's what it basically was you know it was a scary flick uh so october anybody of you guys never seen the exorcist check it out man and 
I guarantee that's gonna bring some type of fear to you. Um, if you're not into those type of flicks, I don't recommend it because again, it, it's a pretty twisted fl flick about a girl getting possessed. Um, so yeah, that one I'll never forget. I, I remember just like I said, didn't sleep that whole night, kept replaying the dumb, uh, scary scenes in my head and, and the fear building up. But uh, I remember the second type of fear that I'll never forget was uh, first time I went on, on a huge roller coaster ride. And this was in Magic Mountain out here. You guys know about Magic Mountain. They're, they're notorious for the roller coasters, fast roller coasters, huge roller coasters. But the one that, that I feared the most, man, and, and again, it's about the word fear. The one I feared the most was free fall. I remember that one. If uh, anybody's been to Magic, free fall is basically this huge tower. And at that time, when I first went, it was the tallest roller coaster that Magic Mountain had. Some people actually like this stuff, man. They like those thrill rides. Like, they like it. They don't fear it. They enjoy it more than anything. But anyhow, free fall was this thing where they sat two people in like a cart. And it went all the way up. I don't remember how many stories it went up, but it felt like it was huge, tall up. And then out of nowhere, boom, they'll just drop you, hence the name Free Fall. And you'll free fall all the way to the bottom within seconds. I forget how many seconds. Like it was really quick because you're literally free falling down. And uh, the fear started like just knowing that we were going to Magic Mountain and we wanted to conquer Free Fall got there did a few other smaller rides that it was like whatever i've been on them before but then it was time it was time to face the music and and let's go ride free fall the closer you started getting to the ride as the line is moving you, you your heart starts beating a little bit more and and you start hearing the noises closer of, of the roller coaster start getting louder as you get closer and your palms start sweating a little bit more and you start realizing, man, that you're getting close to it. You're about to be next. And then once you're climbing up the stairs to, to the platform where it actually sits, uh, you start noticing that, man, like, am I really gonna do this? Uh, was this a smart idea? And again, the, the fear starts kicking in and all these, uh, all these thoughts, all these, all these doubts start sitting in of like, are you doing the right thing? Should I get on it? But come on now, you've been waiting for over an hour. You're gonna get on it. You're not gonna punk out, you're gonna get on it. But the fear is really evident, man. You start feeling it in your heart, your body, you start sweating. Once you jump on the ride, that adrenaline starts kicking in as well and you're just like that's it you're strapped in you're ready to go but the fear doesn't stop there it starts hiding up as you go up as they start taking you high up you start realizing man this is high as hell and i want to say once you reach the top the peak of the climb that's where the the height of the fear at least for me the height of the fear occurred because you're so high up and and they know what they're doing because they, they let you wait there for a couple seconds so you could like really soak it in right and then out of nowhere you just hear clunk and woof you start flying down at that part is it's almost like the fear goes away and it's just more about that intense feeling of free falling your stomach just going up to your neck and once you land, you land and, and you kind of slide down. So you're kind of laying back uh, when you when you land and, and the, the ride finishes. But then what happens is that a, a, a wave of just relief just settles in. Like, you're just like, man, I did it. Like, you're just glad it's done. You know, it's like you, you, you were going through all that heightening of fear and then you're, you're glad it's done. But as you're walking away, you get off the ride and you're walking away, like you're laughing at this point, right? But it, it's still a nervous laugh because, it, you know, that adrenaline's still kicking in, in the body. 
you're walking away. Uh, I remember the legs were a little bit shaky still with that echo of the fear of like, man, I can't believe I did it. But then you start feeling the opposite. Like, at least for me, I started feeling the opposite. I was like, dang, I conquered it. I did it. I, I, I went through my fear. I battled my fear and I won because you went through it. Yeah, that, that was another form of fear for me. Uh, but again, we conjure it up. Uh, some people love those rides, man. Like, there's no fear involved with them. What happens is that it's more like an adrenaline rush. Like, for them, it's like they they need to be at the edge of something to feel alive. I don't know. It's weird. I've 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 never talked to somebody who who just thrives on that kind of thrill. But I've seen it. I've seen it, man. And and some people just love that kind of stuff. It's just like rock climbers that do it freehand, like. To me, that's insane, man, because there's zero uh, room for error because one mistake, one slip, one wrong move, and you're dead, man. And, and these guys know it, but they're still willingly going up there and climb El Capitan at Yosemite. They still go out there and climb. They don't care. Like, that's what, like I said, they, they thrive on that. It's like it makes them feel alive. Uh, people who, you know, risk their life climbing Mount Everest, I wonder if there's some fear in there. There has to be, man, because I've seen documentaries on that mountain and that thing's a beast, man. Like not anybody makes it up there. And, and there's people that have tried and died. So let's talk about fear, you know, knowing that people have died along the way that you're about to embark and you still do it. But again, there's people that just live for that stuff. Uh, they're fearless, you could almost say. Yeah, that's the topic for today. Uh, let me know what you guys are afraid of or, or have you guys been in a situation uh, similar to mine where like you kind of brought fear upon yourself and sometimes more than you should have. And then when it's over, you realize that, man, it was nothing, you know, like you could look back now and laugh about the situation and then realize the acronym of fear, false evidence appearing real. And it's only in your head. Let me know what you guys think, Rice and Grinders. Thanks for chilling. Peace.